G'day folks, Troy Dean here and welcome to another episode of the WP Elevation podcast. I'm very excited this week to have with me a man I met a few years ago for the first time when I was out in Chandler, Arizona and I was very fortunate that my good friend Rich Thurman uh, took me to the Infusionsoft headquarters and showed me around and that is where I met our feature guest this week, none other than Paul Sokol. Hey Paul, how are you? I'm doing good. Nice to nice to hear you. Nice to see you, Troy. Yeah. It's been a minute. Thanks. It has been a minute, man. It's been like <laughs> five years, I reckon. That was like <laughs> it must have been 2014. I was out there. Uh, oh, for wow. those for those that don't know, tell us a little bit of background on who Paul Sokol is and why you might be on this podcast. All right. So um, basically, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Infusionsoft. I've been. I'm assuming the audience knows who that is, and I, yeah. I don't have to. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I, uh, I've been an Infusionsoft customer uh, since 2008 when I started using it for a video email company with my buddy in uh, grad school, and we actually still use it to this day. Huh. Uh, and then I joined as an employee in 2011, and was there for about five years. And uh, in that tenure, I spent a lot of it in the product team, and I actually developed the campaigns of the month that we put out for a couple of years and uh, got to build all sorts of campaigns, and that's kind of how people know me. And um, I've actually done direct sales since before I even did the online thing. I was selling knives in college, so um, having that direct background and then making the leap online was super helpful. And uh, now I just try to help people get as much as I can out of their automation as well as their, their advertising because automation is great, but if you can't get traffic to the pages and collect your leads, then, I mean, it's it's cool looking. It's like having a Ferrari in the garage and never drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Totally. And and the other thing is that um, we're going to, and we're going to unpack a lot of this, but the thing is that getting heaps of traffic is is great. But if you don't have the right automation in place, you end up just leaving a lot of money on the table because you can't literally deal with the amount of people coming in the front door. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, marketing automation is like probably one of the sexiest topics in the last sort of, you know, 10 years uh, that, that, you know, everyone's chasing the kind of the golden um the, you know, the, 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 pot at the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow or the magic bullet, if you like. But I just want to debunk some of the myths around marketing automation. So let's, first of all, let's talk, about, let's talk about what marketing automation promises. Why should someone be thinking? And it's not just marketing automation. You can automate a whole bunch of stuff in the business, right? You can automate mm -hmm. admin tasks. Absolutely. Let's talk about why people should automate things in the first place. And then maybe we can talk a little bit about what you should automate and what you shouldn't automate. Okay. Okay. So, um, so why should they be automating in the first place? Well, um, in, in this day and age, uh, just everything is kind of at scale and everything's growing. So um, you should automate because there's only so many hours in the day. There's only so many people you can pay. Um, if you've got somebody that's, you know, sending an email manually and it takes five to 10 minutes and they're doing that 20, 30, 40 times a day, if you can automate that down to, you know, maybe a five second task and then clicking a few buttons, uh, you can how do more with with less here and do it more reliably. Um, and as you said, it can span all, all, all parts of the business. You can use you can use automation for your internal offer development uh, in, in certain ways, like with your engineers and things like that. Obviously, for your marketing and your sales, you can also use it for the fulfillment or the delivery of whatever it is you're doing. Uh, and that's super common. You see with membership sites and and you know certain agencies will have really cool intake processes that get exactly the pieces of the data they need to do their magic. And then as you mentioned, admin, operational automation. Um, I, I remember back in the day, that I guess it's more about financial automation, but when I first started in 2011, I made Infusion Mom, which was uh, an email that just hit me on certain days of the month that said, hey, time to pay your cell phone bill, time to pay you know the internet. Um, and and it, it's, it's goofy, right? But it worked because you know back in the day, you know, I had like five bills. It was, it was. It's ridiculous to look at back on now, but um, yeah, you can do much more and also just be a little more reliable too. Humans are fallible, you know, by nature. That's just how we are. Yeah. Um, a machine is gonna pretty much do it every single time unless the machine itself is is out of uh, you know just is out of condition and out of shape. So in need of repair. So talking to an automation specialist. Tell me a couple of things that you shouldn't automate. So what shouldn't you automate? You should not automate the generation of your creative. Um, huh. uh, unless you're using uh, a, a couple edge cases, you can automate it when you're like merging information into a video, for example. Mm -hmm. um, there's tools out there you can you know, do a merge of somebody's name into a video. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, as far as like writing headlines and uh, and things like that, uh, writing body copy, writing sales letters, uh, figuring out what images that you want to use. Um, I mean, you shouldn't really automate that. And I'm not sure how you would uh, and make it effective. Um, that's kind of still the human thing where you really have to understand what the offer is and then why the target cares about it in the first place. Mm. And th this is the argument for me for automation. So my friend Nick, Nick uh, Sakalal, who has a software as a service called Leads Hook, he, I saw him do a presentation years ago and he said, you should use robots to automate whatever you can and really scale the business and then hire humans to be creative interesting yeah and and so so example for me is like using a tool like and i'm, I'm just going to leap straight into facebook ads using a tool like ad espresso or choir where you can uh and you know love them or hate them but one of the things that's really good about them is that you can load up a whole bunch of different creative a whole bunch of headlines a whole bunch of copy and then it sort of does the ma the old school mail merge if you like and spits out a whole bunch of variations of your ad based on the different combinations so you should spend time writing, understanding your target, understanding their pain point, writing good headlines mm -hmm. and copy, but then use the robot to duplicate all those different ads into ad sets. Oh, yeah. That's why That's why I love you. Ever played around with Dynamic Creative in Facebook? No, yeah. I know of it, but I haven't, I haven't played with it. No. So basically Dynamic Creative does exactly what you described. It's effectively a self-optimizing ad. Hmm. So... Uh, you turn mm. this on at the ad set level and, you know, there can only be one ad in it because, you know, that's a special type of creative mm. and um, you load up like, you know, up to 10 images, up to, I think, five headlines, five texts, five news feed descriptions, a whole bunch of calls to action and uh, you just let it run and Facebook does that multivariate test and oh. figures it out. You can look at the breakdowns and see what headlines. Are. If I were to share my screen, would like would people see it or? Sure. I mean, can we? Because yeah. we're on Skype, right? We should totally right, do hold that. On. Yeah, just share your screen. Give on me Skype. a moment to. This yeah, is. Yeah, give me a moment. To, I mean, this will make for a great podcast. If you're listening to this, by the way, what you should do if you want to see what Paul's doing is you should uh, wherever you are right now, you should run home or to the office and get in front of your computer as quickly as possible. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people listen to podcasts while they're at the gym or they're walking the dog. Get in front of a computer or even just open your phone and go to wpelevation.com slash Paul Sokol. That's P-A-U-L-S-O-K-O-L. Are they the short links we're using now, Max, or is it episode numbers? You know what? doesn't matter. I'll make sure that works. Go to wpelevation.com slash Paul Sokol, P-A-U-L-S-O-K-O-L, and you'll be able to see uh, what Paul is sharing on his screen here. I should have known, talking to a marketing automation nerd, that we would have ended up in a screen share session. <laughs> Of course, man. All right, and we're using Skype. It's easy enough. So exactly. Cool. So context, before we look at anything else, this is for a yoga studio, local uh -huh. yoga. Uh, it's actually a yoga and a cycling studio. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a member. I go there. I love it. That's why I'm all, you know, jacked and tan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, anyway, horrible jokes. But the point is that, um, you know, we help them out with some of the traffic and whatnot. And um, in this case where we're just like, hey, let's just drive traffic. I love to use the dynamic creative feature because it allows you to, uh, let me actually pull out the, uh, the ad plan for it. This is the ad plan for what you're seeing here. So, uh, and by the way, this is based off of, you were talking about Dennis before the show, good goals, content targeting. He teaches, this is a direct, you know, this is directly what it looks like here. So yeah. our goals here to grow, uh, that's the first wave. Second wave of traffic is what we're looking at here. So, mm -hmm. uh, in this case, we wanted to drive two week purchases, you know, optimizing for landing page views. Let's see if we can get it down to a buck. Mm -hmm. Did we actually do that? I can't. A buck away. All right, not bad. We can beat that next oh, wow. time. Uh, but that's the goals. And then this is the targeting. You know, so we targeted, I think, like seven different types of people from, you know, their page likers to video viewers, lookalikes to their lists, hmm. friends, and then job targets um, and some of their competition. And then the content is down here. And again, this is why I look dynamic creative. So I just kind of wrote five headlines mm -hmm. and again this is not what you'd want to automate again this is something that you like you pay a copywriter like their job is to sell in print and yeah, yeah. that's a very awesome skill and mm -hmm. and i feel bad when copywriters get taken advantage of because like the, again this you know you need to know what you're doing here to understand why but anyway we got a couple angles a couple of headlines we pulled uh, eight images here mm -hmm. a couple different calls to action and then here's where we are and i'm not even worrying about the news feed description yet because that's solo on the totem pole of optimization without even care. Sure. Um, but that's the context behind what's going on, right? 
Got it. Make sense? Any yeah. questions? So planned out in a Google Doc, ladies and gentlemen, old school. I mean, you could even get a napkin out and a pen and write this up, uh, uh, first of all, on pen and paper or a whiteboard. But I love this. Uh, Paul's just showing the ad plan here. It's planned out in a good old-fashioned Google Doc before we actually start using any automation or open any tools. So we've got this planned out in a Google Doc. Then we go into Ads Manager. Yeah. And, uh, and the reason I love doing these plans, especially with clients, is that we can just be like, hey, here's what we're going to go ahead and do. And they approve the little bits of language they want and they don't have to get bogged down within the tool uh, or confused or distracted. Or, what does this do? Um, and then, of course, it's also cool to be like, here's your plan and here's exactly what it looks like in the software. And it's, mm. it's what they saw. So um, the whole point of this is we're talking about dynamic creative. So at the ad set level, uh, this is something you turn on. Um, mm -hmm. and then you can only have one ad per, uh, so inside this guy, we have the, uh, you know, we uploaded the images. Of course you can use videos and things too. Mm -hmm. Um, we uploaded our texts, you know, the one URL, mm -hmm. um, making the display link a little better, the headline and then the description. And we had a different calls to action, right? So this is now self-optimizing ad. Uh, and if you want to preview more, by the way, just to see how things look, you can view more and you can pick and choose and say, show me this exact, uh, show me this exact combination. I want to see what this guy looks like. Wow. Um, so it's super handy. Um, so again, that's why I love dynamic creative because it's a self-optimizing ad Got here. It. And so then Facebook um, just starts to throw more budget at the one that's working. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it optimizes and figures out kind of the best combination. So here's how you read this stuff, right? Uh, and that's the magic because like, oh, dynamic creative is also cool, right? But if you can't look at the data, like... 100%. Point. Yeah. So this lives in the breakdowns here and it's going to be in by dynamic creative asset, which obviously only shows up in, you know, dynamic creative ones. So uh, if the ad is run enough times, mm -hmm. uh, it can actually give you a combination and tell you what the best performing was. So in this wow. case... I'm squinting because I don't have my glasses on. I don't want yep. the glare, but we got some landing page views yep. um, at like 50 something cents. And yeah. it was this combination. Yeah. This was the best performing one. Wow. So we could now say, hey, listen, this is a great control. And then you can see this is, you can rip this for uh, any offer. You know, we're running this right now for a six pack of classes, you know, summer six pack, six pack classes. Uh -huh. um, and it's, hey, hurry before you take this down, get your six pack of classes for 60 bucks. Got it. You know, we can still use the same kind of stuff. Um, but that's just the combination here. So we can actually see how do the images and things work in general. And I usually like to sort by the results. And so we can say that, like, clearly, you know, the hands was the best one, followed by, um, you know, the uh, the man version of the hands. Yep. And then yoga in the park. Yoga None the of the park. other ones really hit for this one. Um, but if we look at a different, uh, we can actually, at the ad set level, we can look at it across all the different ad sets now. Hmm. Um, and so you can see kind of what's working, what isn't working. So um, we use dynamic creative here mm. and uh, we figured out what works. You can see a lot of these, um, you know, some of these uh, images aren't really hitting with people. Uh, my favorite is looking at like the headlines because I'm just a headline kind of dude and seeing yeah. what angles work with people. Um, totally. You know, the, you know, some of the, the benefit angles and these things work really well. What's cool is that we took this, um, we took this dynamic creative and we, we analyzed how it did and we kept only the best ones and recycled it for the summer six pack, uh, promotion. And so right now in this moment, you can see that we've got, um, it's running for a different promotion, but it's using the best performing images plus a couple of new ones. Hmm. So like, yo so this was the control one for the yoga. So this hmm. one, uh, from the same photo set. Um, we have two other versions of the cycle class, which worked really well. Another low res version, which is similar to the, the control, uh, or um, uh, one taken from when they did like a little set on an on site shooting. And then just another general, just, just a generated image here. Um, and again, some of the angles that worked really well. And then there are some other ones. We learned that the social proof worked really well. Discover why 67 people rated us. Five out of five. So wow. I'm like, great. What's another way to say that? Discover why 192 people recommend us because that's that's true. You look at their page. That's what they got. Wow. Um, and then looking at the, you know, these are the best permutations of the best performing headlines here. And what's cool here is that the call to action links actually, when I when I did the breakdown, they there were different performing ones per targeting here. So let me actually see if I can pull this up here. This would be. Um, down here. If see, you, here's some of the new images. We got our controls and then some of the new images. But here's the, how the calls to actions broke down. Um, 
only certain targetings like certain calls to action. And so now this round, that's all that we're doing. You know, we know that sign up only worked really well for the for the lookalike audiences. So cool, those are the only ad sets that have sign up in them. Wow. Um, apply now only worked when we were targeting job, you know, industry type specifically. Um, yeah, it's really super really neat. Interesting. So, this is so awesome. This is uh, by the way, just for those listening, if you're listening to this podcast and not watching it on a screen, you're doing yourself a massive disservice. And by now, you've probably tuned out. You really need to check the video out of this, which again <laughs> will be at wpelevation.com slash Paul Sokol, P A U L S O K O L. You have to check this out. Uh, this is awesome. Now, you. I've got two questions. One, um, yeah. in the interest of complete transparency, Dennis from, from Blitzmetrics has just come on my radar in the last couple of weeks Has been, and his name is coming up on a daily basis. So, you know, they, <laughs> what they say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Um, all right. Second, so, so first of all, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, Dennis and what you guys are doing at Blitzmetrics. But first, before we get there, let's say we find an ad set or an ad here that's working really well. How do we what, – what's the – because the biggest problem that we've had here is scaling – Facebook ads and uh, this is like one of the biggest problems that a lot of people have what's the and I know you can't give away all your, your secrets but what's the what's the um, sure, yeah. you know <laughs> great then tell me how, if you find an ad that's working how do you scale it without Facebook just gobbling up your money um, well obviously you start by putting some more money into the ad sets and making sure that you know your 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 CPMs and stuff are staying good, that your results are staying good. Um, when you find an ad that works really well, try and look for similar or different, uh, similar or related targetings. Um, because sometimes an ad will work really well in um, one, you know, with one targeting, try it on, you know, somebody else. Another thing you can do is uh, what, uh, what Blitz calls is their greatest hits. So they'll, you know, periodically, once a quarter or whatnot, look through every single ad that ran and find the absolute best performing ones. And then they put those, they just copy those ads into the bottom conversion layers and just let them run. Because, you know, you may have some ad up in the awareness layer that only spent nine bucks, but it ended up generating, you know, 500, 600 bucks worth of furniture, you know, for example, mm. um, because it just happened to. So cool, I'm going to go put those in my conversion campaigns. I don't know why, but listen, it did, it did last quarter. Let's, let's boost it up from there. I know that's not really talking about scaling super hard. Maybe it is. Um, yeah, awesome, cool. Um, I'm getting some. I'm getting a note here from the share. producer. Oh, I might just get. Uh, if we're done with the screen share, Paul, I might just get yeah, yeah, to turn the screen share off. Awesome, off. so we can see. Yep. Um, so, mm -hmm. talk to me about uh, your. Uh, we'll come back to automation in a second. Uh, obviously, Facebook ads is something that you're very passionate about at the moment and focusing on. Talk to me about the relationship with Dennis and uh, Blitzmetrics. How did that come about, and what are you doing over there these days? All right. So I met, I first met him back in 2013 through Heather Dobson. Did you know Heather Dobson? Oh, no, no. ran social infusion soft for a while now. Oh, She's yeah. a good daddy. Yeah. Um, she introduced us and, um, you know, we became friends and, uh, I mean, at this point we kind of, we, we talk, uh, you know, in some cases multiple times every day because, uh, we're accountability buddies and, and every day at nine, I'm texting him to see if he worked out and whatnot, and, you know, <laughs> to be sleep and all that jazz. Awesome. Um, but so, and again, I was still at Infusion stuff back at that time. So I just kind of started studying what he was doing and, you know, using it here and there. Um, I had a couple of test beds to play around with it, like uh, my Dead of Winter festivals and some of the show promotions that we do. And uh, just over the past couple of years, uh, well, the past five years or so, I've definitely spent thousands of dollars of my own money just kind of learning and testing and getting stuff to work. And then when I was, uh, you know, when, when I went out on my own and... Uh, 2016, I started offering social advertising as one of my services instead of just the marketing automation and further toned up that, honed that skill there. And um, then, and again, this whole time I've always kind of been helping, been helping Dennis. And then officially when, um, well, rather when, uh, I've always been, what I mean, I've always been helping Dennis is like, I was like with the Infusionsoft stuff and just, you know, helping him out and whatnot. And then when I was off on my own, he was one of my first actual private clients that I was helping with his Infusionsoft stuff and helping with his team and, you know, the organization and operations of it. Uh, and it's kind of, it, it's a, it's always a, a constantly iterating and learning machine. It's pretty cool. Um, and then we, let's see what happened. 
in like last September, the two person agency, there's myself and, and Brina that you see back there, we merged with another agency that didn't end up working out and it ended in February. And at that point, uh, I was like, you know what, Dennis, let's, let's just try doing this full time and uh, having me be totally on your team. So that's kind of where we're at now. And uh, we're learning, we're running faster all the time. And um, it's it's really cool because now it's just more of an opportunity to run ads and to see different kinds of campaigns and work with different kinds of budgets and different types of technologies. And, you know, so like I've, I've played around with um, a bunch of automation tools since Infusionsoft. Now, the most recent one was the Salesforce Marketing Cloud, oh, yeah. uh, which I think is the first enterprise level tool that I've gotten a chance to touch. And uh, yeah, it uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, and it was kind of validating going in there and like halfway understanding a little bit what I'm seeing, um, just because I kind of get automation generally. Yeah. So, um, so that as far as what am I doing with what's metrics directly now, that's kind of the, the nature of the relationship. Um, Again, just kind of on the team, helping them drive projects ahead, helping them skill up their other team members uh, internally with like Infusionsoft stuff. Again, helping kind of with some of the operations bits and running some client work here and there. Because uh, you get you got always you know stay on your toes and run ads, you know, not going to get rusty. Yeah, totally. Um, and so their 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 business model at Blitz Scaling is part client services, part education. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much because the average person, the average business is, is just not qualified to work, you know, with, with Blitz metrics, you know, unless you're spending millions of dollars, mm. you know, each month, like you're the golden state warriors or something, then yeah. you're not really going to qualify as consulting. So that's, that's why, uh, or at least I believe that's why that he makes everything available uh, for free or, you know, packaged up, uh, you know, at some kind of price. Uh, Cause he's, there's all sorts of free videos and, you know, articles and things out there to learn it. And then there's guides that package this stuff up succinctly that anybody can learn. And then if you want to pay to have somebody do what's in that guide, then you can get like that particular package. Yeah. Uh, but then that's like very prescriptive and this is this what you get. Yeah, got it. Um, so yeah, but it's all kind of, yeah. So I'll kind of talk about the same thing at the end of the day. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so kind of like the done for you, do it yourself model. Um, mm -hmm. let's, let's just look back to uh, Infusionsoft for a second. Um, I, I would be doing our audience a massive disservice if I didn't ask this mm -hmm. question. Um, yes. Infusionsoft, when it first started out, was a real trailblazer and was extremely innovative. Over the years, we've seen a lot of things come into the space. Office Autopilot rebranded as Entreport. We have, you know, Active Campaign doing some automation. We've had, you know, Drip, ConvertKit, a lot of other marketing automation tools. Zoho have just released Marketing Hub. And I know you don't work there anymore, and so it's totally cool if you don't want to answer this question, but... <laughs> It, we, we've used Infusionsoft for years, and I know a lot of people that use Infusionsoft, and we lovingly call it Confusionsoft because it is a huge learning curve. Um, oh, yeah. What do you see as, like, the innovation roadmap for Infusionsoft? Because it does – I know they've launched, you know, they've been rebranded as Keep, and they've kind of – they're now kind of going after the, the small business sector. I, I'm a little confused as to – and, and again, you might not care because you don't work there anymore, but I'm a little confused as to where they sit in the marketplace now and what the roadmap is and, and what we can expect. We're still on legacy Infusionsoft because we've got a lot of old action sets and stuff and we're mm -hmm. nervous to switch over to version two because we feel like we're going to lose a lot of functionality. Is version two worth having a look at? Where, where do you think they're going to be in three to five years' time? Are they still going to be a, an innovative solution or because i mean don't get me wrong it's extremely powerful um there's you know that we use it all the time daily there's a whole bunch of stuff that it does that no other product does the fact that it's got e-commerce built in the fact that it's got sales pipelines and stuff built in um but i just i'm a bit confused as to sort of where they're going have you got any insights here you can share with us yeah yeah i um i definitely echo that sentiment a lot before I went to PartnerCon this year. Did you get a chance to go to PartnerCon? No, I haven't, no. Okay. So at PartnerCon, they, because you realize, you know, for the past couple of years, they kind of had had their own little identity crisis and, you know, trying to figure out who they are, who they're serving and whatnot. And so um, basically the rebrand into Keep is an intentional and official move to have the product of Keep and then the product of Infusionsoft rather than Infusionsoft version green, Infusionsoft version blue. Like they're just the 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 target markets were too different so there had to be like offer a offer b like clear distinct you know in the line of course under the hood it's all using the same kind of framework and architecture but you know for the consumer um you know they had to they had to split it so the keep version is for 
Uh, so, well, both of them are for service providers. They're now focusing on service providers mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to you know product people. Mm -hmm. um, service providers that the more pragmatic service provider would be somebody for key. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody that just wants a car to drive around, get from point A to point B, do some basic things. Infusionsoft by Keep is that race car. And so over the next couple of years, what you're gonna say, now that they've officially bifurcated the product into two different offers, one that serves one, you know, one that's a hamburger, one that's, you know, a fish sandwich, you know, I mean, it just a distinct offer, not a whatever yeah. fish sandwich, you know, <laughs> and one's a hamburger, one's a chicken sandwich, you know, same yeah, kind yeah. of idea. Um, they now have the, dev, as, as far as I understand, the dev resources are now split that way. Uh, and of course there's the grid, the architecture shared between them, but now, Infusionsoft is going to allow is is can now push forward being Infusionsoft as we know like this powerhouse racehorse automation thing. It can add new highly advanced things without the average user being like what because that average user is probably going to be just on keep. Um, Got it. And then eventually the keep user may evolve and grow up into needing Infusionsoft. Um, but uh, I see a lot of focus now um, on that distinction, and it's really exciting to see it and i also know that they've got a lot of the old blood and the old guard out so um we should be seeing uh i mean we're going to be seeing a new gen we've been seeing a new generation run i mean they're on the mission to mars at this point for 2030 um but yeah it's definitely a way new generation and uh i mean i'm i'm pulling for him and i think that as long as clay's at the helm they'll they'll be just fine he's been able to steer the ship through through all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So now the ship has just become two ships. Yeah. Uh, and as opposed to one really full ship, it's now here's two different ships. So Infusionsoft, if you're if you're using Infusionsoft, are you still using legacy Infusionsoft or are you using the, the new interface of Infusionsoft? Uh, I'm still just using, you know, Infusionsoft. You know, I don't I don't use keep yet. Got it. Um, I've played around with it, you know, played with it a little bit back in the day, but um, Usually the people I work with already have Infusionsoft and they're going. And it's, yeah, yeah. I'm not really helping people start up from scratch. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is uh, I want to talk about a trap that we fall into, which is part psychological, part technical implementation, is this idea of campaign stacking where mm -hmm. you put someone through a campaign – an automated campaign, they get to the end of that campaign, they either buy or they don't. If they buy, they might get added into another campaign for fulfillment and then, you know, maybe an upsell campaign or an ascension campaign. If they don't buy, you kind of leave them alone for a few weeks and then you put them into a different campaign. We get – how do you plan those campaigns out? That's my question because we get caught – in tag hell <laughs> trying to make sure people are tagged the right way and all of a sudden someone who buys the thing gets the wrong campaign they're like uh dude i just bought this last week how do you how do you as an infusionsoft technician and, and marketing automation ninja how do you plan those campaigns do you plan them out in the infusionsoft campaign builder or do you plan them out on a whiteboard first oh god no i would never plan it up from that that'd be like building a house with the that'd be like building a house with the wood in front of you like you know let's build a house and see how it turns out right um <laughs> That's you definitely point. have to sit down and architect it um and and use an, an actual planning tool just so just like we saw for the the social ad plans you know we also have an experienced planning tool yeah uh, that we use and so that's how you would do it plan it out from a customer centric point of view so what happens um, and it's usually and, and at, at its highest level it's a, it, it's looking at the the assets and the pathways to them so an asset is a landing page it is a sales page it is the book somebody bought whatever uh, and then the pathways take somebody from one point to there so they take someone from the the, the opt-in lead page to the sales page uh, so you know this could be you know a series of emails it could be a series of text messages they could be they could just start seeing facebook ads and tell them to go buy it thanks for joining my list um that's how i would start planning it at the asset listing out the different assets in the customer journey and then figuring out the pathways to get somebody from one to the next um and then it's and then at that point once you've labeled that then you can start breaking down what the actual pathway itself looks like and that's where you're looking at the ground level automation so okay we're going to send an email and then we're going to wait three days and in the morning send an email and then we're going to wait four days in the afternoon and send a third email um and of course that's the for example pushing to maybe a link click goal so if they click at any point of those you know 
that pathway is done. It has yeah. taken them to the asset of the book or the sales page or whatever you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then as far as stacking them, you just make sure that you stack them carefully. So if you build a house and then you want to build an extension onto that house, you plan for the extension that you build into it to make sure that you're not going to knock down a wall and crack some water main. You do your diligence. So if you want to build an upsell into something great, how does it plug into your existing experience? Because it's, it's all one, it's it's all one whole experience. Yeah, it's one right. single continuum for your for your consumers, yeah. regardless of how the heck you want to think about it. It's one continuous thing. Yeah. So um, that's why I got to come at it from the experience first. Yeah, I love it. Uh, do Do you have a preferred experience planning tool that you use, or do you just use Google Docs or yeah. spreadsheet? Or? Yeah, it's just we, we have a tool that we just use Google Docs in here. Let me see if I can find a good. Got it. Uh, let's see if I can find a good plan. What's fun here? I'll I'll I'll, I'll use the planning tool to show you something that's uh, kind of automation-y, kind of not. It's the how we promote a show. Okay. As a, as a venue, how do we promote a show? Yeah, perfect. Um, do do do. There's that folder, and there's the strategic blueprint. All right. I'm totally just using this podcast as a as an opportunity to get a free consulting session from you. You know that, don't you? That's cool, dude. That's, <laughs> I mean, hey, I don't mind. Honestly, I don't mind. I would much rather it, um, you know, go ahead and show up. Uh, uh, rather, I would much rather this happen, but it's free for other people to listen in on. That's, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. Okay, so again, if you're listening to this, walking the dog around the park or at the gym, stop what you're doing, open your phone, go to the browser, go to wpelevation.com slash Paul Sokol, P-A-U-L-S-O-K-O-L, because Paul is showing us a strategic blueprint for a venue mm -hmm. promoting a show. Mm -hmm. So uh, just some of the meta information here. This is part of the marketing and the sales journey. Um, every offer has uh, the customer journey, which is the marketing, sales, and fulfillment of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so this plan specifically is for the marketing and sales of it. Uh, strategically, what are we doing? Uh, what we're doing is selling tickets to a local live performance. That's that's a good strategy, mm -hmm. being, a, being a venue. Mm -hmm. And then tactically, how are we actually going to do this? Is we're using posts to the Facebook page using account done timing. That, that's what we're going to do here. Yeah. So, um, And in this case, this is a simple plan, and I'll show you a little more advanced one in a moment. Um, but this is the new, the new show announcement pathway. So a show gets announced... How do we promote this? So the customer experience is that, hey, they they see that a new show has been announced. You know, it shows up um, <laughs> one month before the show. Then they, they see another post. Hey, the show's in a month. And then, hey, show's in a week, show's in two days, and then show's tonight. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that we're stacking the time and going down. So this runs at 5 and then noon and 10 and 5 a.m. So the closer you get to show time, the earlier it's publishing on uh, the wall. Hmm. Um, and this is what the customer experience is. Mm -hmm. So that's the customer journey, right? And then, of course, we have the operations underneath that mm -hmm. to explain what's going on. And this is where our messaging kind of comes into play. So we just kind of have different angles for each one, specific calls to action. Mm -hmm. um, and then that brings us to the tools. And so all of these tools are the Facebook page up until the last two uh, where we're actually using the Ticket Fly link as well. Mm -hmm. um, since do wow, this was last uh, last June. So since making this one a year ago, uh, this has changed a little bit as we approach it. Now we're keeping it all directly in Facebook because if there's a ticket fly link on the event, which in our case there always is, you can sell tickets directly from the post. From the Facebook so post. So yeah. you just keep it right from the post. Yep. And then of course, who runs operations, Troy? Uh, you do. <laughs> yeah, people do. Um, and they need to actually have the skills to do it. So looking at the skills layer, you know, who has the creative and the technical skills to get this done? Got it. And then who's the person that ultimately owns this? Got it. Um, and this is how we plan stuff out. Um, perfect. Love and it. Love it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Right. It's so Let simple, you but really well thought out. Things. I love it. Uh, billing automation. I'm totally sending a copy of this uh, recording <laughs> to my business partner to say, here you go. <laughs> Paul's just right? giving us the blueprint. Here's how we do it. <laughs> um, here, let me let me unshare my screen for a moment. I want to pull up another plan here. Totally. Um, that we're using for. Yeah, this uh, is this is super valuable, by the way, dude. I can't tell you. Like, this is like a podcast turning into a masterclass right before our eyes. So I really okay. appreciate you going deep here. So, uh, yeah, really appreciate yeah, it. Uh, cool. So here are the billing 
let me make sure. Cool. So we're gonna. I'm, I'm totally. We're, we're totally pulling up. Uh, we're, uh, exactly what we're kind of doing here. It blitz a little bit. So this isn't live yet. This is something that we're working on here. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is going to show you a little more advanced kind of kind of thing. So um, the idea here is that, that this is part of the deep fulfillment journey. So mm -hmm. this is way after fulfillment. Uh, of the Blitz Nation product specifically. Mm -hmm. um, and our strategy here is to collect failed monthly payments. Do you think mm -hmm. that's a good strategy? Troy? I think it's a that? great strategy. <laughs> uh, but how are we gonna do that? Well, tactically, we're gonna follow consistently across channels here. So um, this is that asset and pathway diagram I was kind of talking to you about earlier. So we use Mabirium mm -hmm. and um, we realized that to get to somebody to this successful payment asset, we could totally set up a billing center page in Mabirium mm -hmm. uh, where they can, of course, add a card or update it and then make that. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, basically we got to get people to this billing center asset um, yeah, yeah. and that's how we do it. So the first the first time the payment fails, there's the initial fail pathway, mm -hmm. um, which of course is ultimately just trying to get them to the billing center. And then there's the final payment fail uh, if that occurs. Uh, and then of course there's the final fail pathway. Mm -hmm. So for for campaigns that have a little bit more going on than just a linear down, you know, counting down uh, of promoting a show, which by the way, you could that, you could use that on email. That timing we were just looking at, that doesn't have to be a Facebook page. That could yeah. be a Twitter countdown, email countdown, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so looking at this tool, um, this ten thousand foot view, then we have the pathways on the next uh, on the next one. Hmm. So looking at the initial fail pathway here again, it's all planned out from with respect to the customer experience. So mm -hmm. uh, first of all, nothing happens. The customer literally knows nothing. Mm -hmm. But operationally, the payment has failed, and they've added them, and we've we will have added them to the failed payment custom audience mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook. Um, which, by the way, this is something we're still building out. This isn't, yeah, you know, course. this is live yet. Yep. Um, and then they immediately get a whoops email. It didn't bill. Please visit our billing center. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also begin to see ads um, based on the traffic plan. Hmm. So remember, remember that plan we saw earlier with the with the yoga studio. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we're just going to link. We'll, obviously, we'll have the traffic plan for that, and that would just link here. And then that's how it how it connects. Um, that's how it connects the two because ads, as you know, are not linear. They could see one of any number of ads, but as far as the customer journey, it's one element of it. So, are they seeing so, ads saying your payments failed? Or are they seeing yep. ads for? They're seeing ads saying your payments failed. Yeah, yeah. Whoops! Could whoops? Go to the billing center, fix it up. You're going to lose access. Wow, you that's know? insane. <laughs> and that's that's still to be to be created is the yeah. writing the ads for that, but that will be linked to. Uh, because again, that that's a nonlinear kind of thing. And as long as you, as long as you've got like as long as you've got like twenty people in that custom audience, which if you're running any sort of business, you'll definitely have at least more than twenty people in your failed payment custom audience. Then those ads will run, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, pretty wow. much. That's um, interesting. And so these happen right away. Uh, so they get that email, they start seeing those ads, and then conditionally, and that's just what the little parentheses mean. It's conditional because obviously. You know, if they go to the billing center and make a payment, we want this to stop. So mm. um, if they don't, then one day later in the morning, we say, hey, is everything okay? In this case, we're taking a personal black and white email approach just to try and generate a conversation yeah. um, where this whoops will be obviously automated. Yeah. And then if uh, they still haven't done it in the PM, then we're going to go ahead and do a voice broadcast courtesy call. Just say, hey, you know, you need to uh, go wow. ahead and uh, pay up. So uh, go check like, your email for billing. And that voice recording could be recorded once and then just automated, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the voice broadcast feature of Infusionsoft right. here. So, so this is the initial fail pathway, oh, man, right? Stop it. Um, <laughs> this is the initial fail pathway, uh, and you can see here's so uh, the tools get a little more advanced down here. So we're using some billing triggers and tags, mm -hmm. HTTP posts plus this, and Facebook, yep. email, Facebook. So this. Again, this planning tool is, is a platform agnostic yeah, way yeah. to approach it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, then, of I'm course, the skills it. for flow bronze is, yeah, yeah, I'm glad. This is so good. Um, so this is the initial fail pathway. We're going to now look at the final fail pathway. Yeah. Um, so this is what happens if none of that works. They don't, they don't, they don't pay up. So, uh, again, uh, customer experience-wise, they don't know anything, but the payment fails. Mm -hmm. They get an uh-oh immediately email saying, hey, uh, you're about to lose access. Mm -hmm. And then at this point, we also create a task to call. So somebody in the operations team to actually pick up a phone, invest yeah. that human labor, and be like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah. Um, one day later in the morning, if that still doesn't get rectified, we're saying, "Hey, you're about to lose your benefits." Mm -hmm. um, and then later that day, uh, we'll 
the next day in the afternoon, a final notice, say you're losing in 48 hours. Yep. The next day, we're going to send them an SMS as you're losing your benefits tomorrow. Huh. And then if it waits, then, you know, it happens. They get the email, we remove the subscription tag, we cancel their blah, blah, blah. Yep. We remove them from failed audiences. Uh, and that is the that is the pathway here. Now, mm. there's one pathway in here that I didn't put in here because uh, I didn't realize I needed it until after uh, making this diagram, but there's the successful payment pathway. Duh. Yeah. What happens once they make a successful payment? So yeah. uh, customer experience-wise, nothing. No, that's right. But we need to make sure, but once the payment's logged, we need to make sure that we're moving that from the custom audiences and reset any of those billing tags. So that way this whole thing can repeat next time. Wow. My, I tell you now, my business partner is going to wee his pants when he watches this episode of the podcast. Uh, this is super useful, dude. I cannot thank you enough. This has just been so, so helpful. Um, quick question. You touched on plus this. We use plus this. I might just get you to unshare your screen. Thank you very much. Uh, we use plus this. Plus this is a bit of a weapon, isn't it, uh, when it's plugged into Infusionsoft, yeah? <laughs> Oh yeah, if you it's yeah yeah it's, it's stupid infusion soft tricks and yeah. uh, every once in a while you just need that right perfect one and it does yeah. the job beautifully. Yeah, I got um, two, I got two questions for you that uh, because you're deep in infusion soft knowledge I got two questions for you. Um, two of my big frustrations. What do you use for? So we use WordPress for our blog and all our content, and our podcast and all that good stuff, right? What do you use cool. for landing pages and funnels? Do you use Click Funnels or do you use WordPress or do you use the infusion soft landing page builder? So uh, all three. So if I had my way, I would do it at, like if it was my own website, yeah. I would use WordPress with Elementor. It's free landing yep. page builder. Love it. Um, Love and it. that can do pretty much most of what you need. Yep. Um, I've actually designed my website deadofwinterfest.com uh, using Elementor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for the uh, that's for the heavy metal festival. Oh, cool. um, what is it? I, Dead of Winterfest. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Let's make sure that's still up. But yeah, it should be. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I used that in Elementor. It was my first year using Elementor. Yeah, it's actually. great. We love Elementor. And, We're huge fans. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then so ClickFunnels, if I have a client that uses ClickFunnels, fine, I'll use ClickFunnels. Like, it's cool. It's got some bells and whistles and, uh, you know, whatever. And then as far as the Infusionsoft landing page builder, if I'm doing anything regarding automation, I will just use the Infusionsoft landing page builder and then the uh, the landing page plugin for uh, for WordPress. Okay. So you build the landing mm -hmm. page in Infusionsoft, but then show it in your WordPress domain, right? Mm -hmm. what, yeah. why, why do you do that? Just because it's easier than using the tracking code, the Infusionsoft? Because you can use Infusionsoft tracking code on a landing page that you build in WordPress and then people that land on that page, they trigger like a cart abandon campaign or something like that. What? Oh, yeah. But the advantage of using the landing page in Infusionsoft is just because it's native and it's built in and the automation yeah. is better? Okay. Yeah, it's just native and built in. Here's the form. I can make it look how I want it to look. You know, I don't have to worry about, you know, the header, the footer of my WordPress site or anything like that. Got it. Uh, I make it a true landing page, um, especially when it's for, especially for like internal fulfillment. So if it's like, hey, give us, you know, um, give us five video URLs that we're going to edit together for you. That can just be a landing page. Like that doesn't need to be hosted on your site. Got it. Um, you can just link to it right from the email. What about what about um, a lead, lead magnet opt-in page? Would you build that in the landing page in, in the Infusionsoft landing page builder or WordPress? Uh, it really depends um, on how fast I needed to spin it up. Um, if I needed to spin it up, you know, in a couple of minutes, I didn't really give a hell about it. I would just use the, the landing page builder with their templates because they work. Um, and as, as you probably know, the messaging is what sells it anyway. So as long as it looks halfway decent yeah, and the yeah. word, the, as long as the words resonate, that's most important. But yeah. if it was a more um, in-depth, robust kind of lead magnet or something, I'd probably make my own page for it. Uh, if anything, the landing pages are good for really quick light tests to see do Got people it. even care. Oh, is it yeah. worth making a full landing page on my mm, website? Nice for MVP. Um, mm. Yes, uh, great for MVP. I'm being greedy here. Affiliate tracking and ClickFunnels is a nightmare. How do you do accurate affiliate tracking in Infusionsoft? Do you just like use their native forms? Like, how do you solve that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just use their native stuff. I I don't really play around a whole lot with that. Um, oh. Again, don't usually get a lot of clients sort of playing with that. Um, yeah. I just recommend using the native affiliate stuff. That's a we use it blitz yep. uh, blitz metrics anyway. Got it. Uh, final question is reporting in Infusionsoft. Leaves a bit to be desired. Uh, it's mm -hmm. you know that's why tools like Graphly and Segmetrics uh, exist. What do you use? What's your go-to reporting tool for Infusionsoft uh, for tracking like sales numbers, but also tracking like mo like I'm trying to use Segmetrics and I I'm really trying to use Segmetrics and I'm having a little bit of mixed results with it. We use Graphly a bit as well for trying to work out what's happening uh, from a performance point of view. What's your go-to 
reporting. <laughs> my go-to is the Infusionsoft dashboard. You just set it up in the way that you need it to see, in the way you need to see it. Uh, I mean, I've even set up an entire, um, I had a business scoreboard that had like pretty much uh, as many numbers across all aspects as you could. So how many leads, how many sales, how many hours have been logged, what's the AMRR, um, yeah, how many things are available for sale, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and forward you something, Troy, uh, and feel free to like share this with the, uh, the people listening here. It's, uh, It's, uh, it's an old document. It's from Icon 13, uh -huh. um, but it's still super relevant. Um, uh, one is the, the one page on working opportunities, but uh, you mentioned reporting. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's one that breaks down every single sales report overview. So oh. every single one, it explains what it's doing mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of questions you can answer using that. And I know that that's a bit of a mystery in a black box. So yeah. Awesome. I want to share that and get that out. But yeah, I just use the dashboard uh, and the native reporting of whatever, or like if I'm doing Facebook, it's, you know, I set up the, the Facebook views or if we're doing, you know, Google Analytics, Google AdWords, just, um, it's not enough to just have the data there. You know, kind of like I was talking with the breakdowns. Um, you got to set up the view that you want to see yeah, yeah. and what's relevant to you. So it's worth investing in the time to learn how to show, you know, yep. what you need. Yep. Awesome. Dude. I love you so much. I can't oh, tell yeah. you how valuable this has been. This has been so awesome. We're way over time and I don't care because this has just been epic. And if nobody else gets value out of this, I don't care either because it's been game changing for me. Uh, I, have this, <laughs> yeah. I, I have this love hate relationship with infusion software. I'm always like, ah, oh, screw it. We're going to go and use these other things. And then we're going to plug all these third party stuff into infusion to make it actually work. And then I keep coming back and finding things in infusion soft that are super powerful that we don't use, like voice broadcast, for example. Why aren't we using Do voice broadcast? Do you use broadcast? opportunities? Do no. you sales opportunities? And we don't have sales pipelines because my understanding is that we can't use that in our legacy. We need to go to version two to use sales pipelines. I can't figure out how to get sales pipelines working in Infusionsoft. Uh, you just need the opportunities module. Got so it. that's what you would need. Um, okay. Sales pipeline is the key distinction of a sales pipeline. So um, you just need opportunities and uh, that'll change your life Got it. Uh, for any kind of process. Okay, opportunities module. I'm going to uh, make sure we get that opportunities module. Cool, all right. Um, dude, where can people find out more and send you flowers for this? <laughs> 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 or whiskey for this episode. Uh, this has been oh, so man. helpful. Where can, where can people get in touch with Paul Sokol? So uh, I'm pretty active on Facebook, so just facebook.com slash under the hair. Um, you know, and I'm usually posting stuff. You like that? Yeah, yeah I'm usually posting stuff. And then you can also go to paulsokel.me to join my email list. Um, I haven't I haven't been emailing a whole lot, um, you know, this past year or so just because of, you know, personal things going crazy. But I'm going to be getting back on that real soon with uh, my next issue is talking about like spring cleaning for a CRM. So, again, platform agnostic stuff that oh, isn't yeah. just unique to Infusionsoft, but, you know, yeah. any kind of CRM, yeah. what, what kind of stuff you want to do, you know, periodically, monthly, quarterly, that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. The one question I didn't ask you, uh, which I was thinking about before, and we don't have time to do it now, but maybe we'll follow up on another call sometime, is list hygiene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could totally do that. Yeah, that's Yeah, we a... can do another session if yeah. you want, if you want to do like a part two. That would be awesome. Let's do a part two, and let's do like a deep dive into list hygiene, yeah? Because that's a huge pain in okay. the ass, man. That, that works, yeah. buddy. I will, I will schedule another Let's part Let's do it. Two. Awesome. Unreal. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting Paul Sokol back for part two. We're going to talk about list hygiene. This is awesome. I could do this all day. I'm totally in my element. I'm loving Me it. Me too. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate this. And for those listening, please make sure you check out the video at wpelevation.com slash Paul Sokol, P-A-U-L-S-O-K-O-L. This has been super helpful. Uh, dude, thank you again so much. Look forward to keeping You're in welcome, touch. Troy. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, that is an episode of the WP Elevation podcast. That was just epic. Cannot wait for, to hear your feedback on that. And uh, we will get Paul back for part two to talk about list hygiene. Uh, for now, look forward to seeing you again on the podcast soon. Uh, give us a rating and a review on iTunes. It helps us come up in the search results. And uh, go check us out on YouTube and Facebook. See you again next week on the podcast. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.